Hi there folks, my name is Neverwing24 and welcome to another little review of an X-Plane product. So today we're going to be having a look at the recently released uh, version of Airs Rock Airport or Cornellan Airport uh, made available to us for X-Plane 10 and X-Plane 11 enjoyment uh, from the wonderful guys over at Rim and Company. So um, as I said, I do want to say first off, say thank you very much to the guys over at Rimico and uh, the guys over at Helisimmer.com. Uh, for providing the review copy um, of this uh, this add-on today for us to go through and explore. Um, because, yeah, it, it's really cool that I'm getting a chance to do this, actually, because I, I just want to do a, a bit of a background before I sort of delve into the uh, the video here, the review here, is the fact that um, I've actually been to this airport in real life, and I've also I've had a chance to actually review this um, in the ESP platforms as well. So it's, it's an interesting sort of chance for me to sort of... Um, uh, sort of see where I've, I've seen it before in the sim world, I've seen it before in the real world so it's actually an actually interesting thing for me to actually be able to um, revisit it and I'm really kind of excited to do so, so anyway um, alright, so um, let's get the review underway so Cronulla Airport um, is uh, in the heart of Australia in the Northern Territory um, and uh, is primarily is primarily a tourist airport, uh, it, primarily it is, it's a destination airport um, it has a lot of helicopter sort of um, helicopter joy flight sort of traffic Heading out to, of course, and we're going to pan around here uh, with the joys of the simulator here. Uh, of course, with that uh, giant monstrosity, the monolith that is Airs Rock, uh, and also the uh, the uh, the Olgas um, over in the uh, distance there as well. Um, both of which are covered by the photo reel that it comes uh, with this add-on pack as well. I might add, so we'll get into that a bit more in in, uh, in a moment. Uh, so yeah, as I said, it's it's very it's a very much a uh, tourist airport, so a destination airport. So a lot of uh, a lot, most of the traffic that comes through here is tourists, uh, but it does also support the local communities as well. So uh, a very very busy airport uh, in terms of helicopter traffic um, and uh, some airliner destination airliners. So uh, already I think and see it's going to be a great uh, appeal for more than a few simmers. So there you go. Um, now, before I get too far into the actual review of it inside the actual sim, um, I do want to go through a couple of interesting observations of the actual installation process. Um, I do want to drag into, uh, go into that, so uh, we're going to uh, skip out of the sim here for a moment, and we're going to jump over into uh, the desktop, uh, so we can actually uh, see that uh, going through and be made there. Alrighty, so we're going to jump over the desktop here to go through the, some of the installation process and some of the challenges and interesting facts that sort of come out with this. Now, when you first get the Airs Rock uh, Airport from uh, Rim & Co, uh, it's a fairly basic uh, extract, sort of just extract the zip file, drop it straight into your X-Plane 11 folder and off you go, nothing really to it, all good. Uh, you go jump into the manual, just go through, gives a bit of information about sort of the um, the the area of the, the it's covered by the photo by the photo reel which we'll get to in a moment, um, but there is a, sort of a, a, a for me a, a little a small little alarm bell went when I read this part here, um, which is part of the blurb actually of the product where it goes uh, yeah, airline uh, airline services operations um this and famous sorry where is it I think it was just, advice you to compelling VFR flights throughout the famous outback of Western Australia so outback is the outback is part of Australia. It's like the central part of Australia. Uh, it's not just part of Western Australia. And the airport itself is not located in Western Australia. It's located in the Northern Territory. So just a small thing here. And that's where a sort of a small little alarm bell started ringing for me. Anyway, but I digress. So it continues on, goes through just the basics that you expect throughout the uh, manual. It goes through interesting sort of things about the uh, some facts about the actual airport and the area around it as well, and the fact that they are looking at bringing it to other platforms as well, including Aerofly, uh, FSX uh, prepared, and uh, Dovetail's um, flight sim as uh, flight sim world as well. So great to see that these guys are looking at multi-platform. But good to see that they're starting with X plane as well, which is a bit unusual. Anyway, uh, goes through here again key fa key features here. So and as we go go through a whole heap of the photo reel scenery, um, a lot of the spectacular natural. Uh, natural one is including Airs Rock and um, the Olgas are actually modelled here accurately as well along with the photo reel. Um, really high detail textures, um, custom buildings, custom terrain as well which we're going to see more of once we go into the actual look at the airport. Um, let's go through that um, but the part that I really like was the part about the um, ground traffic animations and the sort of the, the scenes as it were and the actual fact that it's a living breathing airport. Um, so I was really impressed by the sort of this when I saw this in the part of the installation guide. Now speaking of, here's where we get the installation guide. So the first part is we've sort of done here as well 
which is all good. It's actually only about 650 meg, but anyway, um, all done, drop it in, and you're all good to go. Now, here's the part where I get a little concerned. So step two is the photo scenery, where you have to do this from a Google Drive link. Now, that's a little concerning for me. I'm like, why isn't it packaged with the main download? Like, what the hell? Um, and the fact is that the two there's two files, two zip files, one sixteen gig and one six. Like that's stupendously large. Now, to give you an idea, I, I'm not silly, I use a download manager, and it still took about ten goes to get it from the Google Drive, the link that is available here, before I could actually get it to work, uh, before it get downloaded and uh, corrupted and clean. And above that and beyond that as well it sort of says therefore you know thereafter unzip them place the three folders in your custom scenery folder okay all good not quite though here's the thing so we're going to jump back over to here so these are the two files for the extra so this is the main one that you get uh with the actual sort of um uh the actual explain 11 file there all good done that's your main thing extract that ready to go um these are the two ones for the photo reel, so 16 gig and sort of 7 gig. Now the problem is, is that it sort of says, yep, you can just you know unzip the folder, drop it straight in, and it works. Unfortunately, it's actually nested inside multiple folders, so it doesn't just drag and drop. You actually have to get this folder out in order to make it work. Uh, if you just sort of unzip it from the zip level and drop it in, uh, it just it doesn't work. It doesn't load properly. It won't read it. So the manual is inaccurate at best. Is it? And and although that might be simple and easy for many of you who might be more familiar with Xplane, for somebody like myself who's sort of fairly new into the Xplane world, um, yeah, this was literally um days of stressing, of freaking out, of like stressing and like pulling my hair out trying to figure out what was wrong and why it wasn't working before it was like, I realized it was something so simple. So uh, very poorly set up and as I said, something that could quite simply and easily have been resolved here. Like there's just, you know, don't package it like this. You know, that would have been solved this problem straight away. Like bang, done, easy. Uh, it also goes through, so it goes to the sort of the, the make sure you uh, put the um, and make sure you, that you, the Ezra files on top of the two photo scenery files, which you should do automatically, but in case you go to check it. Now, here's the other part that frustrates me a little. So, uh, you have me mentioned before that you know, I saw I was really impressed by the idea of having the the, the scenes and the animations at the airport. Um, they're actually not native to the scenery. Although they're, they're coded there, it actually requires this extra part called Open Scenery X um, to actually work. Now, Open Scenery X is freeware, uh, that's fine, but it's again not bundled with the actual download. You have to to go separately to access this and install it and follow its own it's a, it's set up and installation instructions um, to be able to use it. So that really frustrates me because for me it's like I'm getting an incomplete product. Uh, I, I'm getting a, I'm getting, I'm sort of, you know, I've paid my money, I'm getting this, I'm putting it, uh, the, the end result, it all stacks up beautifully, it looks, it looks, it looks amazing as we'll see shortly when we, once we jump back into the sim. But this multi-step, multi-website, multi-download link setup process is frustrating at best. Um, I, I have to assume it's something to do with some form of licensing agreements. I have to get that, but surely, uh, as a purveyor, a purveyor of payware you know, scenery, if you're going to integrate something like this Open Scenery X um, or Photo Reel, then you know, license it. Find a better way to download it. You know, don't have it downloadable from Google Drive. You know, actually put a part of your website, like this company has a website, put a part of the website available to download it from. Like, it's that simple. Like, really, guys, it's, it's not rocket science. So, anyway, very challenging. Anyway, so that's the end of the installation. So it's just very, just, they're very challenging. I just think there could be better, those instructions, I really do. Uh, it also goes through, gives you some sort of suggested um, uh, scenery setups, uh, the graphical setups as well, the usual stuff, the link and lights, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it does also include information about the uh, airport and its surroundings including uh, ATA frequencies uh, for the communications of the airport as well as main airline operations that are there at the moment as well as a little history about it and of course uh, updated nav charts for this as well so uh, not too bad all good all information everything that you need to have so always good to have so as I said like it's 
the documentation is fairly solid, fairly interest, fairly quality, uh, fairly you know, good, good quality. Um, fairly, it's uh, accurate, up to date. Although it's dated 2009, it is uh, up to date at the moment, um, from what I can tell. Uh, the uh, outlook of the layout of the airport as well is actually done as it appears at the start of the year. So it looks good, and as it looks, they do announce that it is coming to um, other uh, platforms very, very soon, and of course available now. So there you go. Um, look, as I said, I, I just think the manual could be written a lot better, and I think the installation instructions are really not that flash and as well as the fact that they just guys just don't have stuff spread around like multiple different websites like seriously just bring it all together if it's a licensing agreement then make contact with the company license it properly anyway anyway okay so if you do yeah, so if you do persevere with this as I said it will be challenging to set up but once you persevere with it um, you will be rewarded so let's go now have a look at it uh, now completely installed uh, into our sim and uh, see what it's like in X-Plane 11 Alrighty, so here we are back into the sim. Now, as I said, uh, we are doing this uh, review in X-Plane 11, uh, but it is fully compatible with X-Plane 10 as well, which is really cool. Uh, though the night lighting, uh, which I'll sort of throw on the screen here, uh, the night lighting is actually really beautiful. It's really well done. I do want to commend the guys on that. Uh, looking at it in X-Plane 11, the night lighting is done really, really nice for the tarmac area, so this looks right. Now, something I'm going to get onto pretty much straight away, um, because this is the the second sort of product review that I have for uh, have done for X Plane, um, and the thing I noticed in my, I, I sort of noted in the first one that I had that I did was the fact that the airport was very dead. It was clinically dead. There was no activity, no sort of things going on. Now this uh, th this release um, from the guys over at. Um, at Rimiko is completely different, uh, though it does come out to some interesting little scenarios like one we're seeing down here at the moment. Uh, what I like about it is the fact that it is actually a living airport. There is a whole heap of various sort of scenes going on uh, in this, uh, including as we can see two here actually going on at the moment. Um, so the first one we see is we've got a uh, we've got a bizjet uh, and a follow me truck sort of just taxiing along and taxiing down. Uh, we also have actually we see three actually we've got this uh, little uh, animated uh, Hughes 500 tourist helicopter uh, heading off. He, do, he goes off and does a circuit, uh, flies around the area and then comes back into land which is kind of cool. Uh, and we've got a Cessna 172 sort of taxiing out on the taxiway there as well. So um, a lot is, there's a lot going on at this airport. This airport is very active um, and that's because of that open sort of, that, that open scenery plug-in that was uh, included as well. Uh, so uh, that's something that I did want to note pretty much straight away that I thought was really, really impressive and I really enjoyed. Uh, unfortunately, you get a couple of weird things happening every now and again, uh, such as you know the uh, the bizjet taxiing straight through the uh, fuel tanker. But anyway. Um but yeah, as I said, it's really nice the fact that you actually have a living airport because uh, something that I said I found with, with Aerosol Bali was just simply the fact that it was just so dead. Like, there was just nothing that made it feel alive. It really wasn't. Um, things like, you know, whereas this one is very much a living airport, there's actually there's activity, there's scenes going on around the airport, um, both airside and landside, which is really, really cool and what I really like to see. So, uh, yes, yeah, so definitely a thumbs up from, uh, from me for this, guys. Unfortunately, though, it leaves it leads into a couple of weird little occurrences. So, um, all right, I'm gonna okay, okay. Before I get nitpicking, let's let's have a look at the other things that are good. Okay, so this is the uh, wrong camera button. Can you tell I'm not fully used to like uh, explain uh, camera utilities yet? Anyway, so the um, airport layout is, as it appears. So at the end of 2016, start of 2017. Uh, so it is fully corrected and updated. Um, all the correct parking positions are there as well, um, which is really cool, like a really good layout, far better than what the default is, um, which is really good to see and you know, pretty much makes it almost worth it just, just on that. Um, what they've also done as well, they've modelled all the... Whoop, wrong button. Uh, they have modelled all the uh, terminal buildings. Uh, that was awkward. Uh, they've modelled all the terminal buildings sort of correctly as well. Uh, though it did get me down here quick to where I needed to be. Uh, they've modelled all the terminal buildings here at Canellan uh, correctly, um, which sort of yeah gives that here. Um, they've done a couple of you know, like they've sort of cheated a little bit with some of the textures though. Sort of a um, bit of creative licensing with some of that and some of the sort of the uh, the baked in reflections. But what I appreciate with the fact is, is they've gone to the effort of actually, you know, getting the design of the building right. Um, also doing things like putting local flora and fauna, like local flora in, 
uh, to the actual um, to the actual airport as well. Um, they did manage to get a local uh, local fauna in here as well um, with a uh, a very ostrich looking emu. Uh, but yes, they did manage to get one of those in as well. Um, so yeah, I, it's it's really cool that they got that sort of accuracy going as well. They've got most of the signage is correct. Um, and for those who, who may not have been here, like this, all these bus bays at the front of the um, on the airport terminal. Now, that is, a, that is a thing because of the fact that, as I was saying before, it is a uh, primarily a tourist destination airport. So a lot of people come in here, go straight to the couple of resorts and then, like the uh, the, accommod the tourist accommodations near here uh, for visiting uh, Ayers Rock um, or Uluru, as it's also known. And uh, and, and so yeah, it's, it's very much a, a tourist hub. So this is this is correct and as it should be. Um, and uh, they've overlaid it on top of a whole heap of photoreal as well as uh, custom uh, detailed um, tech ground text. Uh, for both air and land side, which is kind of cool. As I said, I re just really like the little scenes that are going on. Like, there's little scenes going on by the sort of like the air conditioning plants, uh, ones going on around the passenger terminals. There's just a lot of things happening um, at this airport, which is what I really like to see. I like to see the fact that, you know, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a living, breathing airport. We've got trucks and you know, vehicles moving around the air, airspace, um, moving around the airspace and land side. Um, we've got a, the terminal as active. Like, I really enjoy the fact that you know, it is a living airport. Now, unfortunately, um, when you see the fact that it is a living airport, you also end up seeing a few of the um, unfortunate sort of, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say unfortunate um, things that the, the teams missed in quality assurance. Um, I, I don't think they're deliberate sort of you know, deliberate actions. I think they just were just missed in oversight, you know, sort of just oversight when they were doing the QA. Um, so we're going to take a look here, for example, um, so the version of Australia is this Embraer. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a very much it serves it. Uh, does the, uh, the the route from um, from from South Australia, I do believe, from Adelaide up to he's done the Embraers. Long hauls done on the seven three sevens. So that's all well and good, until you go to the other side of the aircraft. Uh, yeah, what's going on there, guys? Like you've inversed the textures. What the hell? Like, what the hell? That's like, you know, basic, you know, QA 101. Um, that was really frustrating, like, seeing that. Uh, the other one, I, you see it on as well. Uh, you don't see it so much. I don't think you see it on... See, and you don't see it on the Qantas 737. Uh, so we know they at least got that one right. Um, but unfortunately, we do see it um, on the other sort of um, sort of regional uh, airliner that's here, uh, which is the Dash Eight. Um, so uh, Skytrans, Skytrans do a regular service um, to a lot of the more rural, remote um, airstrips from uh, from Canellan. And yeah, I like yeah, it looks great on that side. But on this side, however, again, textures are just reversed. I'm like, guys, really? What what the hell? Like, what were you thinking? Like, you, you've got this beautiful layout, this beautiful scene um, of, a, of a Dash 8 getting ready for takeoff, you know, passengers getting ready to board, lights are on, you know, what has the lights are on, everything looks great, luggage being prepared, and then you just, like, mess it up with these textures. Like, what the hell? Like, seriously, guys. And that's yeah a real shame. Is it? And these are the custom models that were actually sort of you know included for this. So you can't blame the open scenery library for anything of this kind of nature. This is this is the the models that were specifically done for this scenery for this, which is a real shame. As I said, it sort of spoils the fact that this airport's got a lot of attention to detail, uh, a lot especially with as I said with the stories. Um, uh, with things like, for example, the actual sort of you know, signage on the um, on some of the terminal buildings, uh, you know, it's got the you know, it's got the correct signage on on the Cornell and Main Terminal. Um, it's got the OLS group here, sort of doing a lot of the. Um, I do a lot of the freight forwarding for this area. Um, they've got their delivery f section there. Um, you've got uh, Australian helicopters, which is their main, main, this is their maintenance base there for, as I said, a lot of helicopter traffic through here. Like a lot of detail is here. Um, all the fuel farm, everything is modeled correctly and looks great. And then you're missing something as blindingly obvious as those, as those textures, which is just a real shame. It really is. Like that's, that's a real shame anyway. Uh, anyway, um, speaking of stories as well, uh, and again, one of the cool things with models. So one of the other things that's been modelled quite nicely here as well uh, is they've also got the um, 
the the, the fire sort of uh, the fire training area as well. Um, so we've got a bit of a debrief going on here from some fireys that have been uh, been working uh, here at the uh, the exercise area. We've got a fire truck wandering around, uh, and of course they've got the uh, the fire sort of station modelled very nicely over here as well with the whole the high detail. Um, the correct fire the correct correct fire trucks are used. Uh, correct ambulance though is not. That is uh, that symbol for ambulance is not used in Australia. Uh, just saying. Anyway, um, the other interesting thing is this one here. Now, I looked long, and, and again, this is a thing that's kind of cool, kind of interesting, uh, and for, especially for aviation history buffs, um, but again, it's sort of a little frustrating. So this is a 737 in Ansett Australia colours. Now, Ansett Australia was, a, um, was Australia's second carrier for a really long time. Uh, unfortunately, it went broke. It went broke. It went bust, uh, and is no more. Um, and but they operated all over Australia, all over the world. Now they operated the 737s for a very, very long time. Um, again, some of the attention to detail uh, is things like you know the the placard here for this uh, display one. You know they've got all the sort of dirt and the grime and all the rest of it here. The placard has a 737. Um, on it, so we can actually see that you know, yep, there's all the detail. Flew for Ansett Australia Airlines, everything's there, complete with a photo. Um, but they've used the wrong model 737. That's a 100, 200 series, not like the 7, 800 series, which was what they flew, especially in that color scheme. Just throwing it out there. Again, so again, it's a subtle thing that, you know, there's a lot of great attention to detail, and then there's some cases where the attention to detail is really, really off. Like, really off. So, I, I get torn. So, as I said, I, I'm really torn. It makes me really torn about this airport um, and this, and, and this add-on and talking about it to you guys uh, because of the fact that the vast majority is done exceptionally well. Um, the taxiways are laid out correctly. They're updated, correct taxiway. The taxiway signage is brilliant. Um, the fact that it is a living, breathing scenery is great and brilliant. Um, the photo reel, though a pain in the ass to download and install, um, is really, really nice. And we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go for a flight uh, shortly as well. After I finish waffling and talking about and exploring the airport, we're going to go have a flight over some of the uh, some of the surrounding photo reel. Um, but again, it said it's like for me, it's like a lot of good stuff happening in this airport, and then it just gets let down um, by some of this um, a, a lack of attention to detail, or just or attention to detail that's been missed in quality assurance and things like that. So it's it, it puts me in two minds. Like as I said, I, I want to really want to recommend it because there's a lot of good things going from it, but it has a few issues that. Um, perhaps, hopefully, we'll see the developers actually sort of, you know, look at uh, correcting in a future update, uh, which I hope would hope would come soon. So there you go. Um, alrighty. So the only other issue, main issue that I have with it, um, is actually to do with the way the parking spots are laid out. Now, as you can see from us sort of uh, hovering around here, and for my little, you know, long-winded intro before, uh, this air this airport serves a lot of traffic. It serves GA traffic uh, for joy flights and for local farmers and residents, sort of, you know, to, to a lot of the um, outlying uh, stations and whatever. Um, coming in on their private aircraft, it carries uh, the tube liners, sort of like you know the medium to medium heavies um, for carrying the, all the tourists in, uh, and also carries a lot of helicopters, a lot of helicopter traffic to, again doing joy, joy flights um, around to the surrounding area. So looking at here, um, just sort of pause by sort of you know, over here, we've got a lot of sort of um, GA, sort of medium and small GA parking here. We've got you know six helicopter bays um, plus the main sort of um, in use helipad. So you would think that you've got a lot of room to set up a lot of parking spots. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, they've chosen to only sort of well, they've put most of the ones in the sort of like for the, for the tube liners. That's fine. Um, but when it comes to the GA, well, when it comes to helicopters, they've got none. None of the heli helipads are actually usable as as uh, parking spots, which is ridiculous. It really is. Uh, the other thing is that the GA parking, GA parking, they've only put one GA parking spot in, and it's in the middle of the taxiway. Um, it is in the middle of the freaking taxiway. Um, and what we're going to do is, before, when we restart this, um, I'll jump into the aircraft and I'll restart at the scenario so we can actually um, get into get the aircraft. Get the aircraft. Um, I'll actually show you what I mean because it is just stupid what they've done. It really is. And I'm like, again, one of those things where I'm just like, really, guys, what were you thinking? 
Uh, Alright, so without any further ado, uh, let us jump into an aircraft, uh, let me reset the scenario. Uh, we are going to uh, jump into that aircraft, jump into that flight, and we are going to head out on our little uh, exploration of the uh, of the uh, surrounding area. You can have a look and we'll uh, take you for a flight over uh, Uluru as well. So here we are uh, in, uh, in sort of little the, the, the default Cirrus, so we're going to uh, have a look and we're going to uh, muck around and uh, as I said, here's the, the, the GA parking spot, it's like right in the middle of the taxiway. So then you have a funny thing like this happening, so like the, uh, the, the AI, so the, the, the taxiing scene aircraft, get stuck waiting for you to move. Yeah, it's like you have all of these parking spaces free and you drop me in the middle of a taxiway. What the hell, guys? Like, seriously, what the hell? Hey, okay, all right. Let's get these uh, engines fired up so we can uh, clear the uh, the taxiway, shall we? All right, okay. Battery one, two, strobe on. Building up. And stabilized. Excellent. Okay. My generator's on. That light's on. Shouldn't need any profits, but we will put them on just in case. Okay, alrighty. Looks like we are good to go. One notch flaps for our takeoff today. Okay. We'll get out of everybody's way. Ah. Uh. And I know it's a it's an X plane thing. Honestly, again, maybe I'm just spoiled by ESP, but things like you know. Having you know, like you know, German registration and U.S. registrations on the the aircraft that are sort of kicking around, it, it, that kind of throws you as well. Uh, I know they're just using the default aircraft libraries and stuff, but it's like it is. Yeah. Anyway, I, I see now. I'm nitpicking. Now I'm really just like nitpicking now, which is kind of like I I hate nitpicking. But you know, it's it's actually kind of good though because it means that you know the quality of a scenery is actually good to the point where. You know, I I have to look for nitpicking stuff. So yeah, this, it, this was a kind of what, what I was saying before, with the fact that you know the overall experience of this airport, I find it as I've always I've found it to be pretty good. Um, through the uh, the hours I've been sort of exploring it and all the rest of it, um, it's just got a few sort of quirks and really annoyances, like you know the installation process, um, and a couple of the little nitpicking things. So there you go. Anyway, all right. And uh, we've got our sort of reflections going very nicely, as we see here. I don't spend a lot of time in this jet, so this is probably going to be very interesting for everybody. Uh, with, with with the takeoff of this, should be very interesting. Actually, do I even need those flaps for takeoff? Uh, yeah, we'll do a bit of uh, performance on this one. I mean, as I said, the the taxiway and the runway markings are all very nicely done. Um, they've got the sort of like the terrain, the terrain mesh, you know, for the airport as well, uh, and the area which is always nicely done. Is a base photo reel for the airport as well as the surrounding area, uh, which of course we're gonna we're gonna fly over the uh, airport, do a quick circuit around the airport, uh, then we're gonna head off over to Airs Rock, uh, have a look over there and some of the photo reel uh, before we uh, come back in and uh, give my final thoughts. Alrighty, a little rolling start. Everything looking good. Let's go. Oop. A little too much rudder on takeoff roll. Squirrely little thing, isn't she? Nice 
nice climb out there. Nice easy bank around. So see we've got the uh, Olgas just passing the nose there. Uh, so again, the photoreal scenery does cover the uh, the airport, uh, the surrounding township, uh, the Olgas, and of course uh, Uluru itself. We're going to uh, have a look at uh, Uluru and head on back. So the airport, is it? and again flying over the airport here. And as it's flying over the airport here, I just find that it does sort of look the part. And the overall, my overall thoughts of the, the add-on is that overall it's a, a good experience. Uh, just these sort of minor details just uh, being annoyances. flying over the town here so they've got the uh, photo reel that they've matched and they've uh, put a whole heap of uh, sort of 3D buildings matched over the photo reel which again is good this is one of those things about photo reel that I always sort of sometimes uh, have some issues with because it just it needs that 3D sort of uh, building in autogen to actually make it pop and actually give you that uh, a more uh, in-depth experience So the uh, photo reel scenery, uh, the uh, photo reel scenery that uh, is supplied is available. With this is definitely a lot better than the uh, default for this area. That is absolutely for certain. Uh, it gives you a, a more of a sense of the actual um, sort of you know, size and just the imposing nature of Uluru. It really does. Like uh, I remember actually being here. Um, uh, it was absolutely an incredible experience. In fact, um, just as we uh, sort of fly over the top here, um, just over there in the uh, down there on the uh, in the distance there, that's uh, the Airs Rock Resort, um, which is actually it's sorry, just it's kind of kind of interesting. That it ranges from sort of one star to five star accommodation um, and packages, uh, but it's all actually the same company. It's all the same thing. They're just offering different levels but anyway. Um, and what is kind of cool, yes they did model it, okay, that's cool. Uh, it looks like unfortunately they didn't put any of the uh, buildings in, which is a bit of a shame. It's got some very iconic uh, buildings as part of the, um, the Ayers Rock sort of, um, uh, the Ayers Rock Resort. It's, it's got some very iconic buildings and layouts, so it's, very, it's a shame they're not uh, modelled in this. But what is cool is that it does have this little airstrip here. So uh, this airstrip just by uh, the bottom of Uluru is uh, designed there for the RFDS. Um, so for anybody, and it does happen, people die uh, climbing uh, Uluru. Um, I can't remember the last facility was, but it wasn't that long ago. Uh, but people get injured on a fairly regular basis. Uh, so it is actually important that the RFDS have uh, have access to this, so um, to be able to medivac people out out of the area. So it's cool that the photo reel did get it. Um, yeah, the, and it's it's a bare bone strip. There is no sort of you know bells and whistles on it. So it's just a dirt rough strip. So that's kind of cool, kind of interesting, and great that it is modelled here. So there you go. Alrighty, um, but yeah, as I said, the, the quality of the photo reel is pretty good. Um, generally, sort of just overlaying over the top of the, uh, uh, the sort of occasional get peaks of the uh, standard X Plane 11 um, coming through the bottom there. But overall, definitely gives you that better experience for that. And as I said, it's a it's a nightmare and a challenge to install, um, but once it's in, it's actually pretty good. So there you go.
All right, we're going to uh, head back to Canella now, and uh, once we're there, I will uh, come in, we'll uh, land, we'll park up, and I'll give my final thoughts on the airport and uh, this as an add-on for you all. Coming in on uh, finals to 3-1 here. There we go. Not bad for an aircraft that I've only got, uh, I think, maybe about uh, 20 minutes of flight time I've been. Not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. All right. Let's uh, taxi uh, taxi back to the ramp, and uh, then we'll uh, uh, we'll have a look, and uh, we'll do we'll go go through my final thoughts. I said it's just I, I like as I said it's just one of those funny things where there's a lot of attention to detail in a lot of places and then other places it's just it's not there and it's just that inconsistency of attention to detail I think it just, just drives me slightly nuts it really does it really does drive me slightly nuts alright Here. Oh, we'll park up. Uh, we'll park up next to this King Air with the backwards registration, shall we? That's another one. Okay. The uh, baggage cart go past. Obviously, he didn't get the uh, giveaway to aircraft memo. All righty, there we go. Okay, let's shut this beautiful aeroplane down. cleaned up and shut down aircraft secure alrighty okay now that we've uh, got our aircraft all secure alright okay so now that we're uh, out and I've got back to my usual uh, not really sure what's going on with uh, the camera controls for X-Plane 11 uh, let's have a talk about my final thoughts okay Final thoughts. Um, overall, I think it's a solid. It, it's a good solid add-on. Uh, it is. It gives you uh, very high detailed of the actual airport itself. Um, the runway, you know, the taxiway runway apron layout is very well done. The buildings are correct in the locations and as they appear. 
Um, they they do a lot of the little details, but then again, that's also its Achilles heel is the little details because as you get closer and looking into it, you see that some of those little details start letting you down. So it's a double-edged sword for, for Rim & Co. Is that they've done something which is, they, they've gone and modeled a lot of stuff very, very well in a great deal of detail. And it, then it just seems that they've just forgotten a step of the final QA, which has left it, uh, as I said, with, with a bit of an interesting position for me, because I, I really do want to recommend this to you, and, and overall I will, because the overall experience that you get from this scenery is excellent. It's a living, breathing airport uh, with a whole heap of uh, stories going on, stories that you, you'll discover as you, uh, as you explore the airport. Um, I think that uh, I'm hoping that just a couple of these little texture glitches and, and things that are wrong uh, should be fixed uh, in terms of the actual, uh, so hopefully we'll see an update in the near future and we should see those fixed. Uh, the only other thing that's really going against it is the installation. Uh, as I sort of discussed before when we were talking about the installation of this add-on, um, the installation is clunky. Now, whether that be a case of maybe work together with the Open Scenery team to get a licensing agreement to, to have it packaged with the installer, um, same with the photo reel, or at least if you have to keep the photo reel downloaded separate the way you've done it, at least find a better way of doing it than Google Drive because that's just ridiculous. And also package it up better, please, so it is literally drag and drop. Like that's. Yeah, for somebody especially who's new to X-Plane, that's really frustrating Like for me, so there you go. So, overall, it's got its drawbacks. However, on balance, it is still a solid scenery, a great investment, a great value for money, uh, especially if you're wanting a different, something different in terms of destination airport, so there you go. Alrighty folks, well that does wrap up my review of the release and release Airs Rock and Connellan Airport uh, for X-Plane 10 and 11. Uh, once again I want to say thank you very much to the guys over at Rimaco and the guys over at Helisimmer.com uh, for providing the review copy of this add-on today. And now don't forget as always, if you enjoyed this video to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course as always you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NerdWing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.